Hey everyone and welcome back to another video from Coco's Cosmology and in today's video we are going to be doing who you will marry for our Libras, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. But before we get into this reading you guys, be sure to read the disclaimer in the description box. Alright, so you guys let's go ahead and get right into it. Alright. Who are my Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs, Mary? Who will my Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs, Mary? What can they expect in marriage? What should they look out for? What energy is surrounding them? Alright, let's go ahead and get right into it. So you guys do have the three of swords. Some of you may be feeling like you may never get married or because with this three of swords energy we got to think this is air sign energy it's not only about your emotions it's not only about heartbreak it's about how you actually think of yourself as well the page of swords in reverse you have the knight of wands and you have the queen of swords okay the back of deck energy is the overall energy, which is the tower in reverse. Now, I believe I got that energy for our Virgos as well. And I feel like um, this marriage may take place when you guys may feel like you're at a crossroad, you know, or you guys may get engaged when you feel like some things are at a crossroad. Um, that's the only major arcana that you guys do have in this spread. Now, with the tower being in reverse, you know, um, it is, when it's upright, it is about detoxification. It's about, you know, purging some things out of your life. It's about things starting over the rebirth, the renewal. And I feel like a lot of you guys may be going through this transformational period of your life. And that's where, you know, this marriage may take place. This is the energy that is surrounding it. All right, so we're going to shuffle through the Love Oracle cards so we can see um, what messages you guys have from the Love Oracle cards pertaining to your marriage, okay? All right, the Love Oracle messages we have for our Libras. Okay, so religious factors. I believe this came out for my Libras before. Your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. So I feel like for a lot of you guys, you know, your spirituality is really going to come in and take over when it comes to your love life. Um, it's going to help. A lot of you guys may marry somebody who is very spiritual. Okay. Okay. You guys, wow. Okay. So you guys do have forgiving and learning as you release and heal the past you experience more love in the present moments and last but not least you guys have engagement your love life is ascending to a higher level of communication wow so you know what looking at this looking at the religious factors looking at the engagement looking at forgiving and learning from the love oracle cards i feel like this message is very clear for a lot of you guys leaper once you're spiritually aligned or healed from anything, any type of trauma, any type of heartbreak, um, I feel like a heartbreak will lead you into love. A heartbreak will lead you into marriage. A lot of you guys, I'm not condoning it, but you know, a lot of you guys may marry somebody that may have broken your heart but has mended it back together. Um, through religious factors. A lot of you guys with this three of swords energy, I'm also keep getting the message, getting the message because air sign energy is about how you think. It's about communication. 
it's about your thoughts you know what i'm saying and your thoughts can very well affect your feelings your thoughts can very well affect how you feel about a person you know and i feel like with this three of swords energy a lot of you guys may be putting your in yourself down bringing your self-esteem down you know um libra's Sometimes it's hard to be, you know, ruled by Venus because you may have this high expectation of yourself or you may have this high expectation of your partner to jump through hoops and jump over hurdles and do those things for you. But Spirit is saying it's going to take time because we're forgiving and we're learning. We're learning to adjust to this new process called life. We're learning when it comes to this new process of adulting you know what i'm saying we started off as a baby then we're ch you know very toddlers children and now we're adults and we have to go through this process of forgiving and learning libras so yes you may have had a few heartbreaks or this relationship may have brought you heartbreak but for a lot of you guys, forgiving and learning is what's going to get you to marriage. Not saying that all of you guys are going to forgive the person that broke your heart and get back with them. That may not be the case for a lot of you guys. For a lot of you guys, you may be forgiving the person that hurt you and using that forgiveness to learn from that person and move forward in the sin. Like it said, um, like it was saying, ascending with engagement you know your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment communication you know you guys are going to be able to ascend once you forgive that person and move on to the next person okay now with the page of swords being in reverse you know a lot of you guys uh have this fear when it comes to marriage or when it comes to love the gossip or you guys may be low-key scared of the gossip or what people may say about you it may be your family members that talk and say things about you a lot of you guys are scared to get married because you fear of how you may be looked upon you are scared about how people may communicate about you you're scared about you know your reputation or People may try to manipulate the fact that you're marrying this person for this or that reason. Or it may be all kinds of different things that go on when it comes to this marriage. But will it stop you from marrying this person? No, because people are going to talk. People are going to gossip. People are going to say those things. But some people that are saying those things would love to be in your position, you know, of love, of wanting to be loved and wanting to feel love and wanting to be married. Now, you guys do have <clears throat> this Knight of Wands energy. Now, with the Knight of Wands energy, ooh, I apologize, y'all. <clears throat> My voice is crackling. But with this Knight of Wands energy, I do feel like you guys are going to marry somebody who is very passionate and very focused on getting their paper very inspiring you know somebody who inspires you you know this person that you may marry you may find yourself just gazing at them looking at them smiling at them because they make you happy you know this person although they may get on your nerves <laughs> you know looking at them may reassure you that wow i made the right decision or wow, this is who I'm wanting to be with. You know, this person inspires me so much to do so much and go so hard and I should do it. And with this Queen of Swords energy, I do see this person or this person may be you, but this person may be calling the shots or setting boundaries, letting you know who is for you and who's not for you. You know what I'm saying? who you should fuck with and who you should not fuck with. You know what I'm saying? This person is not playing about you. Also, this person is very smart. Okay? They it's like they're it's easy for them to play chess. You know what I'm saying? And um I just saw the numerology card creativity, but I haven't called on spirit to um let the cards out. It may come back out for you guys for what you guys should focus on in your marriage. And with this Queen of Swords energy, you know, there may be some resistance when it comes to setting boundaries. And it very well may be coming from you. You know, Libras, um, 
no throwing shade no tea um it's it's in astrology um the negative parts of libra can be people pleasing you know and a lot of you guys may have ascended from that. A lot of you guys may be at the point where you don't care about people pleasing anymore. But in the past, it may have affected you. It may have broken your heart. You may have always wanted to please your father. You may have always wanted to please your mother. You know, worried about her reputation, worry about your reputation and things of those natures. But what does that matter? This is your life. This is your love life. So let's go ahead and get into the numerology card so we can see what you guys should mainly be focusing on in your marriage. Wow. So personal, what, what, y'all? So we have forgiving and learning and teaching and learning came out as well. So personal growth, number seven. I feel like it's some seven, seven, sevens going around that you guys may see. But with personal growth, I really feel like you guys are really going to build yourself up. Like this low self-esteem that I'm seeing in this spread, you're going to build yourself up. You're going to pull your confidence up, whether it's you getting more money, whether it's you becoming financially stable. This personal growth is for real personal. And this is your partner. The person that you're going to marry is really going to see that. Once you start focusing on yourself, watch who you attract, okay? You do have teaching and learning, number 57. And I feel like for a lot of you, you guys, this teaching and learning process is necessary. You know, teaching people that you're not to be fucked with and learning who not to fuck with, okay? That's what I'm seeing. I apologize for cussing and reading, you guys. I usually don't do that, but that's the energy, that's the vibes I'm getting this morning. All right, and then the other card to come out was adventure. So for a lot of you guys, it's time to take an adventure. It's time to take a leap of faith. And going on, you know, trips and adventures together is what's really going to keep the relationship strong and sustain that high, you know, that high loving energy in the relationship. So what we're going to do is shuffle through the Moonology card so we can see what energies is surrounding you guys' this love life. Okay, we got one card. Can I get three more cards for my readers? So I'm rising and Venus. Ooh, okay. There we go. Ooh, okay. I believe that card came out for my cancers. Wow. Okay, so the energies did not come out as zodiac signs for you guys. It's a lot of energy going on here. So the first card to come out is the energy is gaining momentum for a lot of you guys. Yes, your energy is gaining momentum. A lot of you guys are getting close to finding your loved ones, depending on whenever you're right, watching this reading. A lot of you guys are getting close to marriage. We do have engagement here. Um, a lot of you guys are just, you know, still in that teaching and learning phase or that personal growth phase. All right. You guys do have emotions are running high. A lot of you guys are kind of, you know, excited about this marriage life or a lot of you guys are you know, yearning and wanting to be in love, yearning and wanting to have that marriage life, yearning and wanting to be accepted, you know, but spirit is saying, what do you need to release? What do you need to release to get to this marriage phase? Some hurt, some pain, some forgiving, some learning, some teaching people, okay? All right. And that's going to bring powerful change expect powerful change so i feel like for a lot of you guys you're just like yes i'm ready to love i'm ready to you know live this happy part of my life you know i'm ready to think it dream it believe it well the energy is gaining momentum your emotions are there but what is it that needs to be released for this powerful change to happen so we're going to get into the astrology cards so we can see you know, what other energies are surrounding my Libras, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for their love life. 
So the first card to come out is the fourth house, which is ruled by Cancer, okay? Your home and the roots of your being. A lot of you guys may be trying to marry a Cancer, or you guys may marry a Cancer, or your children may be Cancers, or it may be anything of that nature that comes out for you guys. You guys do have Capricorn, okay? The energy around you is serious, materialistic, and hardworking. It bestows shrewdness and cautious ambition. We do have Pisces energy. The energy is wistful, endlessly loving, compassionate, and forgiving. It confuses and softens resolve. And you guys, we have the fifth house, which is Leo energy, where you have fun, romance, and creative things you are proud of. So you guys, a lot of you guys may be involved with a Cancer, a Leo, a Capricorn, or a Pisces, or these placements may be somewhere in their chart. If that does not resonate with you, a lot of you guys just may um, have people of those zodiac signs that may be encouraging you, pushing you, and leading you into that direction when it comes to marriage. You may be learning or being t teaching some things um to people of those zodiac signs not to play with you or you may be learning from those zodiac signs so i hope you guys enjoyed this reading libra please give it a thumbs up leave comments down below subscribe and that notification bell so you won't ever miss an upload and i will see you guys in my next one bye